Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Today, top five epic champions in terms of versatility. And you guys know, you've been watching this channel for any amount of time. What is one of the biggest factors you ought to be considering when investing or before investing in any champion is how many different areas are you going to be able to utilize them? What is their value over your placement? What is their overall versatility? And of course, what is their end game value as well? Those are the three factors that we kind of try Try to get a picture of before we invest our hard-earned resources into these champions. And let me tell you guys, 2021, I can't believe this year is almost over. Isn't it incredible? I feel like 2021 just started. And here we go, another month to go or so, a little bit more than that, before this month is officially wrapped, or this year, excuse me, is officially wrapped. There's been a lot of new champions added this year. A lot of incredible epic champions. I mean, just look at this roster here. I'm seeing like a bunch, you know, Thylesia, I think Ryan the Conjurer, by the way, not going to include Ryan, Dark Kale, or Archmage Helmet in today's video. Uh, non Doom Tower champions. And if you want to see me make a list similar to this uh, in, with legendary champions, go ahead and let me know. There wasn't many good rares added this year. That was very unfortunate. Hopefully, 2022 is different. So I have a two way tie here starting at number five. We're going to work our way from number five all the way to the best of the best number one champion add this year. Uh, a tie. Only one tie this video, I promise. Godseeker and Eri and Ursula the Mortar, they're right next to each other here on my champion uh, selector screen here. Uh, both Void Affinity. They're both support champions. Going to be very heavy on the support champions because I'm a firm believer the support is where it's at, right? Get a really good support champion or two on your team. You'll make a tremendous uh, leaps and bounds in terms of your progression in this game. So let's start with Godseeker and Eri, guys. She's an incredible champion. She was added towards the beginning of the year. I think a lot of people slept on her. She has a heal on the A1 one ally with lowest HP on the A2. She has one of these tremendous abilities, which is very rare to find in the game. She has an AOE attack, a heal. She's decreasing the duration of all buffs on enemies and increasing the duration of all buffs on allies by one turn. There's not that many champions in the game who have an ability like this. We're talking, you know, Chris the Ageless. We're talking uh, Sandlash Survivor. There's not that many. A very powerful ability, especially for clan boss. And then we have Rise of Glory, a revival with the reset of a a, uh, cooldown of all their skills. Very, very unique ability as well here on that single target revival on a four turn cooldown. And then increase the amount of healing all allies receive by 10%. That's great. Has great synergy with champions like Sil the Drakes, champions like Doom Priest, champions that heal every round, champions like Rector Droth, right? So great passive effect. And then the active effect is basically a fail safe. If an ally is about to get killed, boom, it's an auto revival. So in terms of masteries for her, I have, uh, I went down with Timely Intervention, which I like having on my Revivers as well. Increases Champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally hero drops below 25%. So I love having that mastery on my Revivers and on my healers, right? Get them healed up. Uh, hopefully not have to revive them, right? So I have Constant Turn Meter Increase on Godseeker and Neri, and I have her in Relentless Gear. Uh, the 2A tie was with Ursula the Mourner. Ursula, it depends on what you need, right, on these two champions. So it's hard for me to choose between the two of them. Uh, we have the chance of decreasing target's turn meter on the A1. She has this ability too, another A2 on a three turn cooldown. She takes a lot of books though, guys. Ouch. Yeah, I love reading. Decrease attack and increase attack on the same ability. Very, very handy to have that, uh, both on one champion on a three-turn cooldown. She has an AoE revive, one of the better revives in the game in Requiem, guys. Uh, increased defense and strengthen on all allies for three turns after the revival. So Ursula the Morning, it really depends on what you need. It's nice to have the increase and decrease attack in the AoE revival, but on Godseeker, she has the double revival the, and the unique uh, buff extender on the A2. So very difficult to choose, but they're both incredible champions. So the fourth most powerful epic added this year and most versatile is going to be Geomancer. So Geomancer is the king of clan boss, the king of damage dealing overall. This guy is still insane, even after that kind of weird shadow nerf or rework they had off of his passive. So for clan boss, Doom Tower Wave, Spider, Fire Knight, Ice Golem, Frost Spider, Nether Spider, Scarab King, Dark Fae, Eternal Griffin, you can use this dude against all 
almost every Doom Tower boss and in the traditional dungeons as well. It's hard to say this guy is not one of the most versatile champions added this year. Tremendous. He has decreased accuracy at a 50% land rate on his A1. On his A2, he's removing all buffs from an enemy, then attacking them. He'll steal them instead if they're under HP burn. He reduces the cooldown of his A3 by two turns if the target is killed while under an HP burn. On his A3, it's fully depleting a target's turn meter on three turn cooldown, fills his champion's turn meter by the amount the target loses, has a 100% chance of placing an HP burn and a weakened debuff on the target for three turns on a three turn cooldown. So always have weakened and HP burn up. Now look at this stone guard passive guys. Damage, uh, excuse me, decreases the damage all allies receive by 15% and deflects that damage onto each enemy under HP burn debuff placed by this champion. That's insane. Whenever this champion is attacked, deflects 30% of the damage instead. When deflecting damage on each hit, has a 30% chance of dealing additional damage equal to 3% of the target's max HP. So my word, my God, it's an incredible ability that can stack up just insane amounts of total damage, uh, provided he is the one landing that HP burn. So yeah, I mean, you guys have seen Geomancer in action. He's an incredible champion. And again, you can use him almost anywhere in the game. Number three champion added this year is going to be Eurogrim. Eurogrim, even after the nerf, is still a tremendous champion out there in the game. He has a two hitter on his A1. It used to be three hitter with poison on the A2, removes all debuffs from all enemies, then heals them by 40% of their max HP. And Bizarre Vapors has a two poisons on all enemies for two turns. Also, a continuous heal on all allies for two turns. This is on a four turn cooldown. It used to be a three turn cooldown. Eurogrim still, you can use him in Clan Boss, Doom Tower, Waves, all four of the traditional dungeons, Ice Golem, Dragons, uh, Lair, Spider, and Fire Knight, Nether Spider, Frost Spider, Eternal Dragon. <laughs> Again, incredibly versatile champion. He's tremendous in all of those areas. He's great because, again, he's fairly easy to keep alive. He has decent defense, decent speed, enough HP, so you can make him pretty tanky. And he's placing poisons everywhere on A1, A3, heals everywhere as well. Man, Irigrim is still an incredible champion. Before the nerf, you can make a strong case. He was the best champion they added this year. I still think he's top five, obviously. Coming in at number four, guys, and then I'm going to run all these champions champions together as I talk about number one is going to be Rector Draft. Rector Draft you can run in the arena especially. Force Affinity in the arena is awesome. That's the affinity that we're looking for for the arena because there's so many magic affinity nukers and arena specialists out there. Clan Boss, Doom Tower Waves, Dragon, Ice Golem, Spider, uh, basically every single Doom Tower boss, maybe with the exception of Dark Fae, you can use Rector Draft. That's how powerful she is. Look at her base stats guys. Uh, we were looking at 109 speed that is very fast for a reviver support champion you love to see it guys really really solid base stats that was the first thing i noticed and you'll see i have my retro draft built in a curing set check out retro draft and curing i have a video guide on that that i will link for you guys in the description below as well so we have a decrease attack 50 percent rate a land rate excuse me not bad at all on the a1 on the a2 we have an aoe uh heal excuse me i was gonna say aoe attack just an AoE heal, and then we have a perfect veil on allies with a full HP. If they're not have full HP, she'll go ahead and put a continuous heal on them instead. And then we have this great revival ability with a perfect veil for three turns after the revival is kicked off. And then the Master of Ghosts. Whenever an ally under veil or perfect veil gets a turn, it's healing them by 10% of their max HP and increasing their resistance. So we're getting passive heals, we're getting active heals, we're getting veils everywhere the only downside is her mechanic takes a while it takes a while to get into i also have her built uh for bommel so we have unshakable and high resist there's a number of different ways to build this champion just make sure you get lay on hands in healing savior as well to maximize those heals but I, i'm just such a huge fan of retro draft uh she's my number two champion out of this year do you guys disagree with me i'm, I'm a feeling that i might be ranking her a bit high uh compared to how some of you guys might ranker but let me know am i being uh am i too high on retro draft i don't think i am otherwise i put her lower anyway number one champion added this year guys is going to be a magic affinity champion and it is going to be ugo i think that ugo is the best champion added this year uh i have her in relentless she's a healer 
She's a kind of a, a pseudo reviver, not really, but a little bit, but just this A2 is for me, well, let's just go through her kit really quickly here. A leech on the A1, great, love to have that. 35% chance, but the chance increases by 5% for each enemy alive, same mechanic on the A2. This ability, man, is insane. This, to me, makes for the best epic epic out of this year. I didn't include champions like Thylesia, champions like Duck the Pierced, who I truly think are just upper S-tier epic champions, but I tend to, as I told you guys earlier in the video, I tend to err on the side of going with the support, going with the revivers, or going with somebody who's bringing a lot of unique skills to the table, so that's why I went with Ugo. An AoE attack, we have decreased defense, that's fantastic. But we also have block buffs for two turns on a three turn cooldown. That's a 50, it's a 75% chance when booked, but again, increases by 5% for each enemy alive. So a Doom Tower wave with five enemies alive, it's gonna be 100% uh, success uh, at landing, right? On that first shot. Man. Block buffs is so good to have in this game. There's not that many champions with block buffs. She is so versatile. You can use her in all four dungeons. Arena, Clan Boss, Doom Tower Waves, Nether Spider, Magma Dragon, Eternal uh, Dragon. Uh, Are you enjoying this? Uh, yeah, I think I got all that right, right? Off the top of the head. There's a lot of places you can use Ugo, guys. She is, if you have her and you're not using her, Shame on you! She's really, really good. Because if you're running a decreased defense champion who's not Ugo, I would just ask you why. You know, is it for the damage? Maybe that's a, you know, it's a, there's some legitimate reasons. You might have some OP legendary top 10 champions in the game. But I would still argue having Ugo for at least Doom Tower, Faction Wars, obviously all these champions you can use in Faction Wars as well. Uh, I mean, this ability, block buffs! You're blocking buffs, man. That's so incredibly strong. And putting a decreased defense defense. She's removing heal reduction debuffs from all allies, then removes another random debuffs from all allies, and then heals all allies by 20% of this champion's max HP. If all allies are dead, revives them with 50% HP and fills their turn meter. She dishes out a ton of heals. In, in addition to everything else she's doing, the leech on the A1, decreased defense, block buffs, she's in a tremendous healer on your team as well. Are you finished? One more word and you won't survive has increased speed and block damage on this champion for one turn whenever this champion's last living ally is killed. Kind of a cool little niche ability to have there. I do have War Master on her and of course Sniper and Master Hexer. All right guys, so before we let you go, let's run all five of these champions together in a uh, secret room, Doom Tower Hard. That's an epic only secret room, so perfect place to go ahead and let them shine. You can already see that buff extension on the veils or the perfect veils from Rector Droth and the continuous heal as well that was the power of god seeker and Neri. so right out the gate here and in terms of damage we're going to get most of our damage from geomancer and from urigrim but mostly from geomancer on this squad keep in mind that uh we're getting the the reflect damage from geomancer's passive but it's only on the hp burns that he is placing himself uh, i showed you guys in yesterday's video my very very fun spider 25 team uh keep in mind the team is very powerful but that is not a few of you guys mentioned in the comments below that reflect is not triggering off of the other hp burns that are placed from that team so anyway guys here we go this first wave i mean are there's actually not a lot of buffers on this team are there and what am I doing here? I guess Warcaster, yeah, there is. So we don't have to deal with the unkillables of, uh, or block damage of Warcaster because we have Ugo, the number one epic champion out of this year. She's applying her block buffs to all these champions. So again, guys, it's a little slow this run because of Rector Droth and the rest of the team. There's not a lot of damage on this team, but that's, again, going to my point of I prefer having champions that are going to be support because time while let's face it you spend a lot of time playing this freaking game right uh at the same time uh it's not all about time as i said in yesterday's video it's about winning it's about winning right uh and that is the you know just a spoiler alert in case you missed yesterday's video uh we talked about it right not having a team that can win 100 percent of the time obviously it doesn't really factor into areas with keys like doom tower and like faction wars but that's the biggest mistake in my estimation that you can make inside this game so investing in support champions is always 
always going to be a wise decision for you guys. Me personally, if I'm kind of on the fence between a support champion or a debuffer like Ugo, she's support slash debuffer, uh, I'm always going with them over just an all-out nuker, especially a single target nuker, because the areas you're going to be using them is so niche. And look at this team together, man. I mean, not many teams can kill, can take down a team like this with all these five uh, all on the same squad, right? Because we're blocking their buffs. We're putting poisons on them. We got decreased defense. We got all the debuffs we kind of need on this squad. We have the weakened to vis-a-vis -vis Geomancer. In a weird way, this is actually a pretty solid uh, squad here that we have. Again, not the fastest in the world, but they're going to get the job done here. So I want to throw the question to you guys before we let you go. Which champions did I snub in today's video? As I said, there's been a lot of very, very good ones added. It was very difficult to pick. Maybe I'll do the most top five most underrated epic champions they've added this year it's another kind of fun video idea because there are quite a few taragi the fall uh, the frog comes to mind that guy's really really good not a lot of people recognize that yet especially a lot of other champions too in the shadowkin faction i feel like people are sleeping on a lot of them uh we know about kind of the best of the best like the genbo this honor by the way genbo one of my favorite champions added this year but i'm not putting him on the list only really because he's very niche in my opinion you know, just, just an AoE damage dealer, and that's about it, but one of the best in the game, right? So overall, I would definitely go with him, but in terms of versatility, which is what this list is all about, I did give him a little snub there. So anyway, guys, I'm going to come back to you once we kill this final wave. I want to compare the damage and compare the healing, especially on all these champions, because there's a lot of support on this squad, and I will be right back. All right, guys, so we are done here. We have Irogrim putting out 717,000 in heal. Godseeker and Neri 477. Retrodraft 1.1 million in heals in that curing set. Isn't that incredible, guys? And then we have Geomancer as the damage carry there with 768 million, 268, or 768 million will be a lot. 768,000, and then uh, 265 from Irogrim and 319 from Ugo as well. A lot of what Ugo brings to the table, as we already know and mentioned, you don't really, it doesn't show up in the box score, so to speak. So, guys, Guys, those are my top five champions, most versatile out of this year. Again, let me know who I missed out on. Let me know who you agree with. Let me know who you use out of these five champions. And with all apologies to Ursula the Mourner as well. We could have had her in there for Godseeker, but I do love extending all those buffs. Uh, really, really good stuff, guys. So that's going to do it, guys. And all those continuous heals as well. Yeah, that's a lot of extension. It's a lot of extension. It is more than meets the eye on that one ability. I should just make a video talking about that. A particular ability because it's so strong inside the game. All right, guys, I've rambled on long enough. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care, guys.